Um, this is one proportion. We'll come back, we'll do that here in a moment. Yeah, we'll do that one as a review question. And this is one mean. So this is one mean right here. This is a t-test. This is two means. And this is a two samp t test. That says two sample t right there. And then this is chi square. And when we do these conditions right here, I always like to say condition one is random. Let's go to the big red pen right here. Condition one is going to be random. You have to randomly select. So condition one is random. Condition two is 10%. So it doesn't matter whenever you hear, if you watch any of my lectures, I say condition one, it's that we randomly select the observations we are taking. Condition two being 10%, those are things we do every time. But I want us to notice something about these variables right here. Who here in the chat can tell me both of these tests are dealing with a what y variable. Both of those tests right there are dealing with a what kind of y variable. Where this one over here, let's differentiate by color. Who knows what the tests I circled with the mean tests are? The tests right here are dealing with a quantitative y variable. And this is dealing with a categorical x. And this one is two categorical variables. So this one is categorical dash categorical, which is one of our conditions coming up right here. So if you notice right here, the t tests are quantitative. Anytime you do a t-test, you have to be predict predicting a quantitative y. Like a one-sample t-test is let's examine the heights of UT students. A two-sample t-test is let's, exam let's understand the heights of UT students and Florida students and compare those. Do you see why the difference is between the one and the two-sample? Let's compare the heights of UT students. Let's compare the heights of UT students and Florida students to see if there's a difference. That's why it's called a two-sample t-test, and we're dealing with the mean of Florida students and the mean of UT students. So it's instead of one group having their mean tested, you're testing the difference between the means of two groups, hence two-sample means test or two means, two-sample two t-test. So when we look at these, we have to understand this because this is going to direct us on the conditions. The conditions right here will be success slash failure. And right here will be nearly normal. And you know what we can do? We can write this across these. Mm, I don't want to. I want to make sure it's obvious. And then this would be nearly normal. Oh my gosh! Not an N. <laughs> an M. Nearly normal. There are no numbers to these conditions. Two samples right there. So if we wanted to compare the Cardinals to the Rangers or the Cardinals to uh, the Yankees. I'm trying to think how else you played for. <laughs> I think Rangers. Wait, wait. And Orioles, right? Orioles. There we go. I've got, I've got family up in Baltimore. So this would be nearly normal. The Cubs, there we go. The Chicago Cubs, there we go. So the two sample and the Orioles, there we go. And so we have here the third condition is nearly normal for quantitative data. And that's when we draw out like a histogram right here and we look at to see if the histogram is nearly normal. So we'd get a histogram from both of these. And the thing is when we do the two sample, we get two histograms. We get a histogram for both groups, so we need to see that the histograms are nearly normal. That is our goal with these right here. We get two histograms right here for this test on nearly normal. So make sure you know that when you do the two sample T, you want to get two histograms. You're going to look at both distributions to see if both distributions are nearly normal. So that is what we're doing right there, the nearly normal condition. And this right here, we want all the success failures to be greater than or equal to 10. The chi-squared's third condition is expected cell count. Is that going behind my head? Not yet. You can be greater than or equal to 5. It's, if it's exactly 5, don't worry. We don't do that on the test. But expected cell count greater than or equal to 5. So that's right by my head right there, expected cell count. And last but not least, we do have a fourth condition. So the fourth condition only applies to the last few things. The fourth condition here will be independent means. In D 
pen in the knee. The bright lights zap your uh, memory. Independent means, independent means, and this is count data. I figure this is a good place to review what's going on right here, to make sure you see all the conditions in my glorious handwriting, best I can do. Um, but random is the first condition for all of these. We need to randomly collect our data. 10% is the second condition, which means we need to take less than 10% of the total population. The third condition depends on the variable type that we have. If we have categorical data, it'll be success failure. And if we have quantitative data, it'll be nearly normal. Success failure means that we need to have at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures, often found by the formula NP0 or NQ0 when doing a statistical test. Nearly normal can be judging the histogram to see if it's nearly normal. Now, if we have a larger sample size, the distribution of the mean, which we're analyzing the mean, we're not analyzing single observations, we're analyzing the distribution of the mean, will be more normal according to the central limit theorem. So you can have some skew if it's around 25, 40 observations, some skew is fine. But if it's extremely skewed, you want to have um, at least around 100 observations to make the distribution of the mean nearly normal. I still don't understand the cell count. Great question right there. We can go to that next because that's kind of a good way to work backwards on what do we mean by expected cell count. Expected cell count is that we want at least five expected cell counts in all of our cells. Now let's talk about that here in a moment and we'll mention what count data is. Count data is satisfied by what? How can you say we know that it's count data? How do we know for certain that we have count data when we're doing the chi-squared test of independence? There we go, Adriana, great answer in the chat. It is count data if both variables are categorical, categorical. Oh no. I'll be there around 4.30, 4.30, <laughs> 4.30. Good questions in the chat. So that is the conditions right there.